Here are two MLB sliders. Did you see the difference? Today, we're going to be covering what makes these pitches different and how each can be effective when used the right way. But before we jump into today's video, the long-awaited return of the Simple Sabermetric Shop is finally here. This time with the SS Performance Hat, featuring an all-color rubber patch on a very high-quality branded Bills Performance Hat. This hat has instantly turned into one of my personal favorites, so if you want one for yourself, hop over to the Simple Sabermetric Shop today to get yours. Now on to the video. Before we can completely understand what made these two pitches different, we first need to understand a few metrics, one being spin efficiency. Spin efficiency describes the amount of spin on each pitch that affects the movement of that pitch. Typically you'll see this metric position between total spin and true spin as a percentage. If you were to have a pitch with a spin rate of 2200, but a spin efficiency of only 80%, then the actual amount of spin making that pitch move would be around 1760 RPMs. True spin is just your spin rate, the total number of times that the pitch would revolve around its axis, scaled up to a minute. Spin efficiency then is simply displayed as the percent of spin that aids in movement. On some pitches, you want this higher, some lower. Then taking 80% in our example of our total spin gives us our true spin. You can think of this as an adjusted spin rate. This is important to understand because in this example right here, let's say the pitch thrown was a 90 mile per hour fastball, the total spin on this pitch would be about average, but due to its spin efficiency we're actually looking at a pitch that would perform with a lower than average spin rate due to its true spin. This was a quick recap, so if you're still confused on this topic I've done a full video on this in the past, I'll leave a link down in the description. Now one part we did leave out here is exactly how spin efficiency is calculated, so let's take a brief look at the information that goes into spitting out this number. The next metric we will target is gyro degree. This is something that I believe is only found on Rapsoda's output, but it gives us a good visual representation of what the numerical value from the last slide comes from. You can think of gyro degree as the visual representation of what we've covered so far in today's video. Most of you are probably familiar with how spin direction is measured, as time on the clock viewing the ball from behind. But this doesn't paint the whole picture of the way the ball moves. This metric assumes our ball is a circle, a two-dimensional object, while well, it very much is not. To take this into the third dimension and turn our circle back into a sphere, we must consider what happens when our axis shifts forwards or backwards. To do this, we can take our baseball and view it from above, right at release. Gyro degree is simply the degrees the axis is away from being perpendicular to the direction the ball is traveling, in this case from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. If a right-handed pitcher gets around the ball slightly, our gyro degree may change to 45 degrees. This would in turn lower our spin efficiency because our spin isn't all going in the direction of the pitch. If this were a lefty, we would simply note this by displaying a negative number as our gyro degree. Pure gyro spin occurs when our gyro degree hits 90 degrees. And if we were looking at this pitch from behind, you notice that the baseball is spinning around one single point similar to the way a football spins when thrown with a perfect spiral. If you look at this video of a fastball being released, you'll notice that the back of the pitcher's hand is flat at the release point, making the ball spin back towards that hand after it has been released. However, on this example of a slider, you'll notice that the pitcher gets off to the side of the ball, creating more side spin. This pitch has a significantly higher gyro spin, which in turn creates a lower spin efficiency. Again, if we lost you through any of this, take a look in the description for some videos solely focused on these metrics. Now on to the fun part. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are two different types of sliders. And before we go any further, there are several more slider movement profiles that fit between the two examples we have today. But you can look at this example as hitting on each end of the spectrum when it comes to this pitch's movement profile. The first is a pure gyro spin slider. Our example of this pitch is going to come from Luis Castillo from the Cincinnati Reds. A pitch with pure gyro has around 0 to 25% spin efficiency, or a gyro degree quite near 90 degrees as we mentioned before. If we were to take a look at the spin induced movement plot for this pitch, you'd recognize that it is supposed to have no movement, but if you're watching the video in the middle here, you'd probably think otherwise. Just because there's no spin induced movement doesn't mean the pitch doesn't move, but that's a topic for another video. Gyro sliders are often pitches that are described as sharp, late movement pitches. On the other hand, we have our sweeping sliders. Our big league example of this pitch is going to be Adam Adovino. This pitch will typically come in with a much higher spin efficiency number. I'd say anywhere above 50% would be considered a sweeping slider in my books. According to Baseball Savant, 
Adovino's slider has about 62% active spin. The gyro degree then will register a lot closer to zero degrees, and if we look at our movement plot, you'll see significantly more spin-induced movement on pitches similar to this one, typically directly along our x-axis. This being a lot of horizontal movement and not a ton of vertical movement. These sliders are commonly described as frisbees, or a bigger movement style pitch. To solidify the difference, let's play the same clip that I showed at the beginning of the video of each of these pitches one after another. First, Castillo's gyro slider, and then Adovino's sweeping slider. It's pretty easy to spot the difference when you know what you're looking for. If you're new here, I like to end every video briefly reviewing what my main takeaways would be from this video. There's a big difference between adding terms like spin efficiency and gyro degree to your sabermetric vocabulary than actually understanding how they can be applied on the field. My hope in showing you this example is that you're now able to understand what these metrics actually look like out on the field. If you got stumped along the way, or just want to dive a little deeper into any of the things we discussed today, check out the description for links to a bunch of videos I've done in the past on these topics, including things like spin efficiency and gyro degree, as well as a slider pitch design tutorial. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.